So first, I'd, uh, I'd really like to thank uh, Nancy and Jeff and George Church and Autodesk and uh, the other organizers. I think this is such an exciting time uh, for the field, and uh, this is such a great group of people to uh, collaborate with, and I'm, I'm really excited uh, to see what happens over the next uh, decade. So I thought today I'll just tell you a little bit about the research going on in my laboratory with a l little emphasis on cell-cell communication. So I, um, I originally trained in organic chemistry, so I did round bottom flask chemistry, and, and then I did chemical biology, which sort of combines that with um, molecular biology. But when I started my uh, independent career, I, I came back to Columbia in, in 1999. Um, I thought that you know there were already a lot of people doing beautiful work uh, in that kind of chemistry, and I thought instead, it could be fun to see if we could engineer yeast to do uh, new chemistry, and I think uh, that has turned out uh, to be a very good uh, decision for us. And, and when I started, specifically what we started with is new technologies, and so we basically asked, you know, could we uh, engineer yeast to carry out both the mutagenesis and the selection steps of directed evolution directly in the cell, so we could in essence program the yeast to engineer the new chemistry for us. And I think if we think about how hard it is and how large of a library it still takes to engineer an antibody, I think it really makes sense that we are going to need new um, enabling uh, technologies. So we started by focusing on the selection problem in the early uh, 2000s. We showed we can combine basically yeast genetics and organic chemistry uh, to trick yeast into uh, to carrying out new uh, uh, chemistry, and I, I think um, you know when we published this paper in 2002, I think our, our H index was really low, um, but I think uh, maybe this makes a lot more sense here at the context of this uh, meeting. We then went on to work on the mutagenesis uh, step of directed evolution, um, and uh, this was work carried out by Dante Romanini and Pamela Peralta Yaha, and we basically came up with a way that we can have um, recombination-based mutagenesis that's compatible with sexual reproduction. And we have a heritable cassette plasmid that keeps track of the mutation we've made and also allows us to pass on to daughter cells. And while we've only done a little work with this uh, technology at this point, um, I think if we think about, again, the kinds of library sizes that might be required to engineer multi-component uh, systems, if we can take advantage of sexual reproduction like nature does, arguably, rather than just searching a library of 10 to the 8th, if we had a virtual search by analogy to computational chemistry of three libraries of 10 to the 8th each, and they could meet the winners of themselves, uh, this could, you know, maybe be a virtual search of a library of 10 to the 24th, which gets exciting for engineering a system. But I think uh, really uh, what we and, and others are, are really excited about now is sort of as we've had a series of enabling technologies in the field of synthetic biology is to really um, ask the question if we can engineer a cell to do anything, uh, what, did, what would we like to engineer it uh, to do? And I just like to emphasize that we don't want to engineer yeast to, to do something like you know, synthesize a molecule that it then uh, leaches out of the cell. Um, we're really interested in applications where uh, the yeast itself, as opposed to a small molecule or a biologic like an antibody, um, is the product. And so that's, you know, really the question that's on our mind. And we've chosen um, to work with yeast, uh, which makes a lot of sense, both because it's fantastic in the laboratory um, and it's already used as a household product and it's safe for centuries. So I think really the, the first application uh, we thought of uh, with yeast is in the area of uh, diagnostics. <coughs> and, um, and, and basically, I think the idea is very sim you know, simple. If we think about antibody uh, dipstick uh, uh, tests, um, those are actually pretty expensive. They're about a buck um, a test, and they can require, depending on the format, you know, expensive uh, reagents or equipment um, to read them out. And so we basically ask, could we engineer dried yeast uh, to do the same thing by putting a modular receptor on the outside of yeast and having the yeast make something colorimetric so that you know even somebody in a remote village can just uh, detect it uh, by eye. And we estimate that dried yeast could be about one cents a test, um, and again, you know, really not requiring any technical reagents or, or expertise. And I won't go into this project uh, uh, today. I'll just mention it's under review. But this was really a collaboration between uh, Neely Ostrov, who's here at the meeting, 
Sonia Billerbeck, who's here at the meeting, and also um, uh, Miguel Jimenez, and suffice it to say, that we have been able to engineer our first generation uh, biosensors. We started off by focusing on fungal pathogens, both in human health um, and in uh, food safety. So here we're sort of thinking about, um, you know, engineering an individual yeast, um, you know, as a product. But I think one of the next things that you know, we're going to want to do is um, engineer communities of, of yeast and other organisms that can uh, function uh, together to carry out more uh, complex functions. And, and this project has been a collaboration with uh, Jeff Boca, um, and it's been carried out by Sonia Billerbeck, Miguel Jimenez, uh, Jamie Brisbo, Netta, who just spoke, and uh, Michael Shen. So if we think about um, having a community, it, it naturally comes to mind that we'd like to have some kind of uh, communication language. And I think it's fair to say that, that really the, the best communication language uh, that is out there comes from, um, you know, uh, bacterial uh, communities where they use like acyl serine lactone molecules. But the problem is those just aren't very scalable. And, and even though they've been around for a while, we've only really seen two to, to three um, orthogonal uh, systems. And so we basically said, look, yeast um, actually already has a uh, orthogonal communication language, and this is um, using uh, peptides as a sing signaling molecules and GPCRs um, as the sensor. And so we hypothesized that we could just go into the, you know, what's known from the fungal uh, uh, databases from sequences, and we could just pull out the sequences of the peptide and the GPCRs for the different uh, fungus for their communication language. And so suffice it to say, we worked out a pipeline uh, to do this. Uh, we now have over, uh, cloned over 30 uh, peptide GPCR pairs. We find that they cluster. About two thirds of them are highly orthogonal to one another, and the other third, interestingly, have a lot of um, crosstalk. So that gives us you know, immediate access to much bigger uh, libraries than we've had before, in essence. For the peptide uh, molecule module, we also have a sort of a framework for how we carry this out. Um, and then we developed assays uh, for being able to see if the peptides are being secreted. So suffice, suffice it to say, again, we have on the order of 30 peptide GPCR building blocks at this point. And, um, and really what we're doing now is starting to play with communication. We've been able to demonstrate successful communication between uh, two yeast, and we're beginning both to scale this and to look at like a daisy chain motif or other uh, ways in which we might have these yeast uh, communicating. But I think this is just the beginning. I think this it really can be a very massively scalable uh, communication language that can be easily imported, hopefully even into mammalian systems with the use of a GPCR. And I just want to end, I hope I highlighted some of the individual work, but I'm very lucky to carry out this research on the 12th floor of a new interdisciplinary science building um, at Columbia, and I'm in both the chemistry and the systems biology departments at Columbia University. Thanks so much. Everybody ready for a snack? Okay, I, th I think I get to decide then. So, so it's the close of this session, and uh, we'll see everybody in the break area. Great. Okay. <laughs>